What does massive banks being bailed out have to do with not just tech prices, but all prices? Well, everything. We are currently living at one of the most important historical points in our generation. Make no mistake, whatever happens going forward will be one for the history books. And as a tech-centric channel, something I feel is much more important than, for example, arguing whether the price of the upcoming RTX 4070 graphics card will be priced at $649 or $699 MSRP. Although in a separate video, we will be talking about that. However, today, let's break down what has already happened in relation to bank bailouts, in particular Silicon Valley Bank, First Signature Bank, First Republic Bank, and now even Credit Suisse in Europe, where in relation to the US government, in collaboration with the FDIC and the Federal Reserve, has not just stepped in, but has made an unprecedented move to guarantee all deposits at the first two mentioned banks, though it is what is happening behind the scenes that is more interesting and also disgusting, though let's uncover all the skeletons in the closet right after this sponsor spot. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. The Federal Reserve of America has implemented a new policy to buy treasuries and bonds at face value minus 10 basis points, meaning if the bonds that these banks hold were purchased at a time when interest rates were at 0.1%, then the bank effectively can cancel out any losses that they may have occurred when the Federal Reserve raised interest rates after that, which at a time where interest rates have risen at the fastest pace in history is quite a lot of lost money, especially if a bank like SVB did not take out any form of insurance against the aforementioned scenario, which they didn't, effectively gambling client funds. Now, some may say, well, they are only borrowing this money. They will have to pay it back. But if by the time they need to pay the loans back, interest rates are at 0.1% again and the printers have spooled back up, then it effectively keeps the banks liquid now, the same banks that gambled with client funds and made risky bets, the same banks, ladies and gentlemen, that people say are so important for payrolls. I mean, these accounts are already insured for $250,000 anyhow. If you have higher payrolls than this, how do you have a business this big and not take heed advice of one of the first lessons you learn in primary school business. That is, not to put all your eggs in one basket. Furthermore, what you don't hear on the news is clips like this. It, will, will, those will those individuals, companies, entities, and investors that are Chinese investors be made whole based on assessments in my banks in Oklahoma? So what I'm asking is, will my banks in Oklahoma pay a special assessment to be able to make Chinese investors whole? from Silicon Valley Bank. Uninsured investors will be made whole in that bank, and I suppose that could include foreign, inv foreign depositors, but I don't believe there's any legal basis to discriminate among uninsured I get it, but I, I'm just saying my community banks are going to pay this additional fee. It is always fascinating to me as well, the conversation that taxpayers are being made whole in this, that taxpayers are not going to have any kind of consequence on this. I'm sure my bankers are going to be very excited to know they no longer pay taxes. So basically, in the end, the average citizen does indeed pay for it. We will end up, in the end, paying for the crypto bros taking risky bets on doggy coins, buying up pictures of apes for millions of dollars, rich Chinese investors dumping bonds, the list goes on. In the previous video, I said that in due time, the real risks and information with what these banks did with client funds will come to the surface, and when it does, it will show the true horrors of what is going on. But let's play another clip. Start with some of the banking issues we're dealing with on it. Will the deposits in every community bank in Oklahoma, regardless of their size, be fully insured now? Are they fully recovered? Every bank, every community bank in Oklahoma, regardless of the size of the deposit, will they get the same treatment that SVBP just got or Signature Bank just got? A bank only gets that treatment if a majority of the FDIC board, a supermajority, a supermajority of the Fed board, and I, in consultation with the president, determine that the failure to protect uninsured depositors 
would create systemic risk and significant economic and financial consequence. What we have going forward here in simple terms and translating what we just heard there is basically we will determine which banks go under and which banks stay afloat. And we will get into this relation to tech prices soon. They coined the term GSIB, or Global Systematically Important Banks. These committees scare the public into saying a mass contagion will spread, though I would argue the mass contagion is already here. It's called superinflation and lower standards of living. Though let's quickly go back to Silicon Valley Bank, for example, and see how important the bank really is. I mean, just take a look on your screen at the list of quality companies on display here. <laughs> it's getting really hard to put on a straight face. And this committee, they call this capitalism. But government nor the Federal Reserve will dare call it free market capitalism because it is anything but free market capitalism. It is crony capitalism, corrupt capitalism, steaming pile of shit capitalism. The list of names can go on, though in free market capitalism, the bank's employees, its investors, and all its depositors would lose their money and or employment tied to this bank. Society would become smarter in its future choices of banks, and the money itself, in this case the fiat United States dollar, would retain its value. In fact, it would slightly gain value. Instead, the opposite is happening. It's now losing value yet again. Though this time around, circumstances are very different, even compared to 2008 with the global financial crisis. The debt levels are far higher, especially versus total GDP, or gross domestic product, which related to forecasting leads us to the exponential nature of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet going forward. This line that you're seeing on your screen that goes through here is the exact nature of the future debt that needs to be created to service not only the previous debt, but maintain the same level of economic output. See, inflation has now reached critically high levels, and this starts to feed itself. And as governments desperately try to maintain the same level of economic output, they, via the Federal Reserve, print excessively more amounts of money to accommodate this need. Think about it. Prices have already gone up for basically everything. And then you would have government departments all asking for more dollars. And in order to give it, they have to create it somewhere. So we need to start thinking this could be the beginning of the Weimar Republic, where money becomes so worthless that people carry it around in wheelbarrows and try to purchase just simple items with a tremendous amount of cash. That's where we are heading if something isn't done soon. Though that now leads us back to prices. In order for the previous example to happen, we have to look out for key events in no particular order. The first being the next US government debt ceiling being raised. The second being a pause or a pivot in interest rates while inflation levels remain higher than those interest rates. And the third being the Federal Reserve balance sheet spiking higher much higher than the recent $300 billion that they added via this previously aforementioned facility. Basically, even if the government and Federal Reserve are dancing around with quantitative tightening, then going to quantitative easing, then back to quantitative tightening, and even performing selective socialism for banks, if the amount of money being printed isn't at the rate of this illustrated trajectory, then the system will break. Though with that exponential rate of money printing, it will break too which is ultimately the historical crossroad that we have talked about at the start of this video. See, if the printers do spool back up at the Federal Reserve, then what this means is your RTX 4090s, i9s, i7s, or Ryzen 5 CPUs will go up rapidly in price, as money itself loses value at paces never seen before. This creates what some people call the genie out of the bottle effect, where suddenly people are rushing out to spend whatever savings they have left too, further compounding the problem. Though if this level pauses or skips up and down at a median level of currently roughly $8 trillion on the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, then prices will come down, especially tech prices like RTX 3080s, 4070 Ti's, and more given the current levels of inflation, especially core inflation. So your favorite i9 or even Ryzen X3D CPU will also come down in price if the balance sheet contracts. Well, prices will actually come down rapidly in this last scenario because debt is ultimately deflationary, especially with an interest rate or transfer of money to the banks added on top. And this now leads us to the conclusion of today's video. Which way will this go? Well, historically speaking, even all the way back to the days of the Romans, it's only ever gone one way, and that's the first road, hyperinflation. 
Though before we get there, I believe the roller coaster will present some good bargains and opportunities. Even now, for example, look at the prices of an i7 12700KF on Amazon, 270 bucks. Extremely cheap comparing that to the M2 money supply, especially versus previous generations of i7 CPUs from Intel. RX 6900 XT, $650, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory kits, $70, two terabyte M.2 NVMe drives, under a hundred bucks, even DDR5 32 gigabyte kits of memory are now around a hundred dollars. So it's basically a great time right now to buy tech, especially if you are not fixated on one particular part. Though what about the used market? Well, in fact, I would argue that perhaps the best deals are buying either parts or already pre-built gaming PCs from the used market. Even though they carry risks, which we have covered extensively here at Tech Your City, which put the links up here for you guys, they are generally not the people being bailed out, nor according to previous transcripts, will they be bailed out either, like the big firms selling the products, meaning this sector will have the best deals available. Though besides all this, ultimately my advice as always is stick to the age old rule, price versus value. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. So before you buy anything of significant value, always ask yourself, are you getting value when you make that purchase? Lastly, do keep in mind that the time frame for reaching this crossroad is becoming increasingly shorter and shorter. In other words, time is becoming more of the essence. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed this much requested second finance video. And if you want, I can follow up with a part two of this specific topic. But one thing I will remind you guys, please do not put all your eggs in one basket or should I say one asset basket. Anyhow, guys, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also if you've stayed this far and you're enjoying the content around Tech Yes City, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and also let us know in the comments section below, what do you think about the content in today's video? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.